Hey guys, welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified podcast. Today we're speaking with an entrepreneur who's able to rack up over 187,000, which they've raised on Kickstarter for more than 1,200 backers. And I think what's so cool about today's interview and story, so he actually was part of an MBA program. A lot of his friends were doing things like going into investment banking, going into finance, et cetera, more of the traditional routes. But he decided that he was gonna sort of blaze his own path into the future. He decided to launch a Kickstarter campaign for what he invented, which is a Dutch oven. The first real innovation in cast iron cookware for nearly a century. It is incredible design, amazing cooking. You're going to hear about it on today's podcast. So this person kind of was going, I guess, against the trend in some ways. And it was a huge risk. You hear about all that on today's show. But he was able to attract more than 1,200 customers, over 187,000, which has been raised at the time of recording this. And you hear about all the tricks of the trade that he discovered in doing this process and going through the Kickstarter launch formula, you know, and going through the process of running a new crowdfunding campaign. So you're going to hear about all of that on today's episode. I really think you're going to also take away some good lessons strategically. But that being said, if you haven't yet, go and check out some of the other episodes I got out there. There's so much content when it comes to this podcast. Um, go and listen to some of the early, early episodes. You're going to hear some of the tried and true basics, the foundations of crowdfunding, which you can bring to any kind of campaign, whether that's a tabletop game, a gadget, a gizmo, in this case, cookware, design product, etc. You can bring these principles and they will work. They've been proven time and time again. And you can hear it from the horse's mouth. You can hear these entrepreneurs, these creators, these innovators come on the show and share with you what worked for them. And this is really why this podcast is just so instrumental for you and why I think it's one of those things you should be always playing in the background as you're gearing up towards an upcoming launch. So that is number one. Number two, I also put together a free course for you if you're interested in learning more about how to launch one of these campaigns. So this is a free step-by-step -step course I'm going to be sharing with you. You can enter your name and email. And you can kind of get started there. This is, I think, great if you want to learn about the principles of crowdfunding, why it works, what you got to do in order to get a campaign funded, and you're sort of at that stage. You should go to the link I'm about to mention, which is crowdcrux.com slash kickstarter. Again, that link is crowdcrux.com slash Kickstarter. Again, that link is crowdcrux.com slash Kickstarter. Enter your name and email there. You can get started with my free course, Getting Up to Speed with How to Run a Killer Crowdfunding Campaign and also how to smash that goal when you go live with your Kickstarter. But that being said, let's dive into today's episode and learn how Fire Up Cookware was able to raise over six figures for their Kickstarter campaign. It's coming up right after this. If you're worried about the fulfillment and shipping part of your Kickstarter campaign when it comes to getting out all those perks and rewards to your backers, rest assured I've put together a complete Kickstarter fulfillment and shipping checklist for you, and it's free. This is sponsored by the folks at FulfillRight, and they thought that you should have this checklist as part of your arsenal going into a crowdfunding campaign. If you want to get instant access to this checklist and it's free, you can go to fulfillright.com slash checklist. Again, that is F-U-L-F-I-L-L-R-I-T-E dot com slash checklist. Fulfillright.com slash checklist. Just go to that link and you can download it immediately. Hey guys, welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified podcast. So we have a mega success on the show who's on a six-figure Kickstarter campaign for Fire Up Dutch Oven and has already attracted more than a thousand backers, seven days to go. And we're lucky enough to have Raghav on the show today. Welcome to the podcast. Hi Sal, how are you doing? Excited to be here. Definitely, man. Excited to have you. Why don't you start by maybe you could just tell the listeners a bit about your products and uh, just describe that for them. We can get started there. Absolutely. So quite simply, it's a cast iron Dutch oven. Now, what is a Dutch oven? Something that allows you to braise, bake, stir, saute, fry, roast, and goes in the oven, works on all cooktops, including gas, induction, and ceramic. Now, what's different? Conventional cookware only heats from the bottom. We have signature fin design on our Dutch ovens that allows it not only to heat from the bottom, but also from the sides. This enables more even cooking and it helps with faster heating. Now, and that basically uh, goes on for some gas saving uh, functionality. So this is what the product is in quite simple words. 
Very cool. And in terms of your background, are you a cook? Like, how did you get excited about this idea? How did this come into your mind? Absolutely. So I was doing my MBA at the university two to three years back, and I was very uh, clear about not wanting to take up a job. I was always looking for opportunities, and I didn't apply for a single job. Myself have a background in cookware manufacturing. Got it. And did you kind of think that Kickstarter was going to be always the route, or when did that come into the picture? We, we got interest from a few investors, retailers, when we showed them the product, what it's about, and how form sort of meets functionality in this product. But I think what was very important to me always was customer validation. Unless there were real people who loved your product, who really wanted the product and wanted to see innovation in the cast and cookware industry, I just didn't feel right going to the market without that validation. So sort of getting those loyal fans, those loyal backers, it was so much more important to me than going directly to market through retail, etc. So I think Kickstarter was just right for that. So you basically wanted to make sure that the people who are backing this project can give you some good feedback and validation. You can kind of go from there with the product idea. How long did it take you to really bring this concept to market? Over two years. And it's been quite a crazy ride with COVID o- over the last two years. We were scheduled to launch last year, but with multiple lockdowns in whichever countries we had factories, etc., it was getting more and more difficult. So developing the design over one or two years and then bringing it to the tooling and the actual factory and then testing with the professional chefs and our backers was this whole procedure of around two years almost. And for you, were you sort of coordinating all of these different teammates and team members? And was that kind of your role in the process or was, did you have a different role? Absolutely. So I was uh, the founder from day one. So you're basically wearing multiple hats, right? Be it production, man, uh, team management, uh, be it marketing, finance, et cetera. And I was also sort of bootstrapping this entire Kickstarter bit. So yeah, all responsibility and all gain or pain, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. What did your friends and family think when you, you know, told them you're doing this new product launch idea? Well, I think it's quite exciting, right? So I came out of the MBA and most of my friends were either going into investment banking or lawyers or private equity, all of these very typical post MBA jobs. And they'd ask me, what do you do? And I'm like, I am selling pots. And uh, so it was, a, it was a very different route to take post my uh, post grad. And it was interesting. When I went to a few investors, etc., one of them actually called me a pan man because I used to take the pan from my bag and I used to put it in front of them. And I'm like, this is what we have. <laughs> so it was very just get that reaction. Uh, but my family was quite supportive because uh, they'd seen that we have some sort of expertise in cookware manufacturing from the family business and wanting to get that direct to customer, showing that value to the customer was actually very exciting for them. Very cool. Very cool. So walk me through this launch. I mean, I'm sure it must have been quite nerve wracking before you go live with this. What was the response like when you finally unveiled this to the community? Absolutely. So in terms of the first week, uh, actually the week before Kickstarter, we'd sort of uh, done a ton of sort of pre-launch marketing. Where can we get the right, where can we get the backers? How do we interest the community? How do we create that intrigue and that interest? What was very interesting, Sal, was over the last six months before the launch, I personally Zoom interviewed hundreds of passionate, be it home chefs or cast iron enthusiasts or people who just wanted to cook for their family, for themselves. And when I interviewed them face to face, um, I just learned so much about the product, right? I learned so much about the launch. There were so many things I did not know that they loved or did not like. And I think once we actually went into the launch, the first week of the launch was always nerve wracking. That one time when you actually press the launch button, But I think we did incredibly well. We went up to 200% of our target in the first 24 hours and uh, carried from there on. So pretty excited with the response and like so thankful to all the backers. Yeah, that's that's super cool. So how did you do that? You know, when it comes to getting people excited before you go live and creating trust, are there any ways that you specifically try to encourage that kind of a connection with your backers? Absolutely. I think the one word is hustle. And what we did was we'd set up an Instagram account one year back, right? We built around, we built the graphics, design, etc. Then we personally went and DM'd hundreds of backers in that time period. We got them interested. We said, we are sort of students from Oxford and we would love to speak with you. That's about it. And so many of them graciously agreed 
So I think that research over that one year where we simply cold called, cold messaged and cold mailed people turned out to be an extensively enriching learning experience. So I think that hustle in terms of just going out to investors, going out to the cooking community, going out to people who love cast iron is something uh, that was really helpful. Exciting. Yeah, I mean, I think the other thing is it really makes you just more confident, right, in what it is that you're doing. And when you do go live, you have a bunch of people who have been kind of pre-screened a bit or know exactly what to expect. So it can be exciting. What are your thoughts on like, you know, you're coming from an MBA framework and you probably know a lot about metrics and numbers and like that kind of stuff. Was there any things that you did when it comes to making sure this launch went in your favor? Like, did you break out the Excel spreadsheet and like calculate things or how scientific did you get about that? So quite honestly, we did all of that, right? We did, we broke out the Excel sheet. We put in the metrics in terms of return on ad spend and all of the other metrics, et cetera. Right? It was very interesting that we were pleasantly surprised with whatever happened. It's almost not possible to predict the projections and the trends that come out of the Kickstarter campaign because there's so many factors that um, are almost hard to uh, predict for future trends. And I had to basically throw everything back in the bin and I learned day by day. And I think the best part of a, about a Kickstarter campaign, I think, and the biggest quality about a Kickstarter campaign is that the ability to pivot every day. Because in other organizations, you get time to pivot in months or weeks, et cetera. The timelines are a lot bigger, but out here every day you have to pivot. So I think that uh, learning through the entire campaign in terms of metrics has been very, very important. When I was looking through your project, one of the things that really stood out to me is just like the simplicity of what you're doing. I mean, you also, you only have one reward unless I'm mistaken as well, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That, that's such a different approach. Like, you know, what kind of led you down that approach? I think it was quite simple. Our resources were limited. And we believe that we had a great product. Now, how do we get a great product in the easiest way to the end consumer? So from the very first day, we were very clear that we want to be simple, clean, and must be very easy to understand. I did not want to put like five rewards. I did not want to add 100 add-ons. We were focusing on giving this piece of innovation in the cast iron industry. And that's what we wanted to focus on because I knew the... Customer cares about this product, right? They do not care about us trying to make money from here and there and all of that stuff. So I think it was limited resources, keeping it as simple, clean, and easy to understand. And I think just being ourselves, you know, we were just so like, through the video, we basically shot what we were doing. We were hanging out, you know, the professor and I were hanging out and we basically shot that. So that, that was the key to uh, the simplicity there. Yeah, I mean, the other thing is that, you know, there's a lot of times like analysis paralysis where if people have too many options, they tend to not even make a decision. So you're kind of leaning into that as just giving people a very simple option in that way as well. Absolutely. So we wanted the person to buy into the vision of what we're presenting through the video and the simplistic description. And the end reward would be essentially the Dutch oven itself. So we did not want to confuse that event. It was quite simple. We are, present, we are making this great product. We've invested a lot of money and time. And uh, here we are. So we don't want to confuse you. It should just be easy. Yeah, that, that definitely makes a lot of sense. So when it comes to this process, you know, what part got you the most excited about this? You know, Where for you is like the win? Is it when you first got all that funding in the first couple of days? Is it seeing the rewards, the comments come in when people are selecting the rewards? Like, Where do you find the most value and most rewarding part of this? Because you've been working on this, like you said, for two years. I think the love from the backers, no question about that. I think money and the funding is just part of it. Sal, we went through the comments that we received. There were so many people who were like, I genuinely believe in this product. The science is strong and I love how great the design is. And a lot of people said they just seem to be like a nice team, you know, because we came across as simplistic, honest and genuine. I think that was so important, building and retaining trust. I think... So the other bit, while, of course, there are a lot of pieces of this puzzle, just receiving comments, someone said it's a useful piece of art, or someone said it's rare to see function, functionality, functional design adding to aesthetics, right? So people are like, you, don't, you should apply for a design award and all of that. So I think just the love uh, and the value that we can actually pass on to the customer was the most exciting part. And it still excites me every morning. So yeah. What advice would you give to a creator who's looking at this and like, wow, this is insane. Like this guy raised, you know, six figures with his Kickstarter so far. He's still a couple of days to go. 
What advice would you give to a beginning creator who's looking to run a new campaign and kind of in the same way, build a brand from scratch the way you are? Yeah, absolutely. I think number one, be super honest and transparent with backers, right? Building and retaining trust is going to be key because if there's trust in you, if they trust in what you're saying, in what the product is, that's what matters, right? So they're buying into the trust, they're buying into the vision. I think the second thing which I learned through the campaign and probably didn't think it would happen is stay on top of your numbers, right? Because there are a lot of agencies, there are a lot of these marketing people around you and everybody wants to pinch some margin because they see this massive number coming up on the Kickstarter dashboard and they think there is a lot of flexibility there. But of course, with the initial expenses, et cetera, you need to stay on top of the numbers every day. And I think third, very simply, don't overdo the campaign. Be simple, be clean, be easy to understand. Okay. And when it comes to the being simple and, and building that relationship, you know, one of the things that you mentioned as well is warming up people ahead of time. Like how long in, in time-wise did you do that before you launched this actual project? Absolutely. So I think we were working almost one year before the launch of the product, right? This was also due, due to the pandemic. Sin, because the pandemic, our sampling and our prototyping was actually delayed due to lockdowns in Belgium, where the product is manufactured, etc. So what we did was we started to interview and ask people and sort of work with them as to what do they like. For example, a lot of people said we like an interior dark surface. A lot of, said, a lot of people said we need like an interior light surface, right? Or people said we want wider handles, we want thinner walls. So sort of taking those details and actually consulting with the factory and the professional chefs, bringing it all together was both part of harnessing interest from the backers and also product development. So I think that one year before the Kickstarter campaign was very crucial. And I think it's going to be different for every product and every campaign. But I think I really needed that one year to be very confident of what they're delivering. Yeah, I mean, the more time you have, obviously, the more you can then experience and you can try things out and you can do th go trial and error. Were there any major surprises that you had that kind of surprised you when it comes to either the backers or what they liked when you were in that learning phase? Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of what they liked about the product was actually very different, right? So there were a few factors in the product design, for example, maybe handles or how do we ship, what countries do we ship to, et cetera, that the backers gave us a lot of insight about. And maybe getting that information from the experts or from blogs or from sort of online resources wouldn't have been so useful, right? So all of those practical insights that you get from the backers after having those one-hour conversations was incredibly useful and sort of, you know, really helped us out here. And, you know, after you, your campaign ends and you start to, you know, build and, and manufacture and that kind of stuff, are you planning on launching an e-commerce store? Like wh what is kind of the goal here? Are you building a whole new cooking line and new products there? Do you have any thoughts on, you know, what's coming next for you? Yeah, so that's a great question because we've actually got the same question from a lot of backers. And we are very excited to share that we've already started to build out the next product in the range. For example, we are looking at pans and different sizes of Dutch, mainly by popular demand. A lot of people have requested that we do this, that, etc. So we will be extending the entire line of cookware and sort of lending this signature fin design across cookware, getting out more colors, sizes, etc. But with the main vision in line, which is bringing innovation to everyday cooking, to everyday things. Okay, so basically solving different problems that your new audience has and like mm -hmm. trying to figure out ways to do it. Are there any things inside that you think about like, okay, this is the better problem to solve than this one when you're thinking that through? Like, because there are so many different cooking ware and products you can do. What makes you really settle on that one idea? I think the Dutch oven was an easy one just because of it, because of the universality of its use. And second, how versatile it was, right? So let's just take the example of why we settled on the Dutch. It could sort of do all of these things in terms of frying, braising, uh, roasting, sauteing, etc. It's compatible with induction and oven and gas, etc. So it was important that the cookware actually appeals to a large number of packers because that market must be large enough so we can create value for each and every customer. So I think 
that 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 breadth of the customer base is sort of important to us. Yeah, because then obviously you can make sure that you know you have a better bang for your buck and you're able to reach more people and you have a bigger market size. Were there any tools that you recommend people check out throughout this process or any ones that you found useful to you? Yeah, absolutely. So I think Kick Track was very interesting because you can compare competing campaigns and also it gives you a good idea of how to project your also I think I interestingly enough, I also read the Crowd Tracks blogs before at some point. So they've always been very useful. And, oh, uh, nice, man. Happy to hear. Yeah. And I think most importantly, what I did was I reached out randomly on LinkedIn, on e- through email IDs to past creators. And to be honest, they really helped me out, right? With smaller, should you ship now? Should you not ship to these countries? Should you ship to these countries? How difficult are things going to be? So re- reaching out to those creators was super helpful. Yeah, so just kind of like collecting experience, doing your research, sounds like, you know, searching up blogs and reaching out to other creators was kind of instrumental for you. Cool, man. Well, so are there any other things that you'd like to pass on to the audience? And also, where can they go and learn more about your projects? Absolutely. So firstly, thank you all the backers and supporters and all the people who've shown so much love and interest. I think you can go to fireuk.com. So it's F I R E upuk.com to find out more about the product and of course go to kickstart and just type fire up dutch oven and uh, the campaign is there we still have a week to go so we are in the most exciting part of our campaign and uh, yeah we'd love to see you there we'd love to see you cook in our pots okay my, my final question for you is you know if you were to speak directly to the creators in the audience you could share either one word of encouragement or something that you wish you knew or you know, just kind of what it's like to be on the other side of this process, what would you share with them? Absolutely. I think persistence is key. As cliche as it may sound, persistence is key. There'll be fires burning everywhere, every day. You have to put them out, right? And uh, just keep at it. That's it. Nothing else. Just keeping at it is the big, biggest skill, I guess. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it and look forward to your next seven days here and you're already killing it. So I'm so happy to hear as well that you got benefit from the blog and the community and I look forward to seeing your success in the future. Thanks a lot, Sal. Such a pleasure to be here. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Crowdfunding Demystified Podcast. Again, my name is Salvador Brigman. Thank you for joining me on today's episode. I got started in this podcast back in 2015. I started this industry in 2012. It's been a labor of love for me to be able to bring this information to you, to document it, to to keep my fingers on the pulse kind of when it comes to the new trends that are emerging in this industry. I'll also just share with you the opportunity that I see that is afoot. There's always cool stuff that's going on in this industry, and that's really why I try to bring these episodes to you. However, if you kind of want to customize this a little bit more to you. So like, I really do think I have the blueprint outlined specifically for you when it comes to all the new episodes and all the episodes that I have in the past. We can go through that treasure trove. If you want this customized to you, if you want to invest a little bit in your launch, in making sure that you have every single duck in a row, in making sure that you have your things squared away when it comes to launching one of these campaigns, you're going to have a bang when you go live with your project. And also that you're just not kind of missing out on anything. A lot of the people that I talk with, a lot of the students I have, they're just missing out on things they just didn't know about. And rather than trying to spend the next months discovering all that and like creating logs of all these different tools that are available and all the things you might not know about, why not just get banging out in a one-on-one individual coaching call where we can get in-depth into your project and to figure out exactly what you got to do in order to smash your Kickstarter goal or your Indiegogo if you're going down that route. So in this intensive call, not only we're getting through the strategic side of it, but also the nuts and bolts, giving you feedback, homework and action items, all of that we're going to get into in that one-on-one coaching call. So if you're interested in booking and sort of putting on that time aside in order to help yourself with this project, I'm going to share a link with you where you can go to this form. You can enter a little bit of information. You can share with me what you're doing and you can book a one-on-one coaching call if you want to with me. So that link I'm going to give you right now is crowdcrux.com slash coaching. Again, that link is crowdcrux.com slash coaching, crowdcrux.com slash coaching. Just go to the link crowdcrux.com slash coaching and you can enter some information there and we can schedule that call ASAP and we can get this squared away. Thank you so much for listening. Again, my name is Salvador Brigman. Go and check out some of the other episodes we got out there. Give me a thumbs up if you're listening to this on YouTube. Leave a positive rating and review, please, if you were listening to this on iTunes. That would mean so much. Also on Spotify, if you're on Stitcher, every once in a while we got a Stitcher listener there in the house. Would mean so much to me and I really appreciate any kind of kind words that you leave. Thank you so much. 
My name is Sal, and I'll see you next time.